All right, so uh, let me explain what's gonna go on here. Thanks for being here again. I know that's kind of inconvenient right now, but uh, I think it's the best way to do it. You know, have a live class, just like a normal class period during the day. Period one as normal, we're out of here at nine o'clock. I'm not gonna keep you the whole time. I always try to respect your time today. And um, um, I've already sent out Google question of the day. So if you are on Google Classroom and you've seen a question of the day pop in, it is uh, the question asked for what is the solution or what is the point of intersection on problem number two that we're gonna do today? Because I wanna go through about two or three problems here right away. Uh, just so you can see it. Again, if you look at my iPad screen here, you can see the point of today is finding the points of intersection again, like we started yesterday. So we want to get everything into slope intercept form. And then we want to make sure that we're graphing it and figuring out where that coordinate is, right where those lines cross. Uh, that's what we're doing today. So um, you can kind of get a feel for what we're going to do. Again, question number two is the one where you have to write down the coordinate. I want your coordinate as your answer today. Uh, so um, hopefully last night, if, uh, if you didn't check, uh, the video went live last night. It was kind of late. It processed forever. Sorry. I can't help that. Um, but it, it was live. Um, it's, it's a work in progress. So um, it, I feel kind of bad because I post the video like you're seeing here. And I put my little picture in picture in the corner like I always do. And it kind of covered up some of the problems. So sorry. Um, I don't know a better way to do it. I, I know it's kind of important that you see, see me so you can see kind of my interactions. But maybe I'll have to move it up in the upper corner. Uh, I'll kind of play which, which corner I should put it in so it makes sense for you. Um, but again, the goal is to find the points of intersection. So I sent out the question of the day, and then I also sent out an assignment today. There's three problems in the assignment. It'll be due this Friday. So um, even if you're in class or not, because I know we're in the hybrid starting tomorrow, right? Half of you are here, half of you are not. Um, It'll be due Friday no matter what, and I want everyone, no matter what, to submit it on Google Classroom. So you'll attach the photo of your work on Google Classroom on that assignment, right? So that's how you turn it in. Um, I know that's kind of weird. Um, if, you don't, if you don't have access to a printer, um, you'll just have to do it on a piece of paper. Draw a little grid, kind of put where you think it needs to go. It, it'll be fine, I'll grade it. Um, if you need graph paper, just let me know. I'll get you a copy. Um, you know, you can stop in any time. Um, remember, the, the administration gives us leeway to have you guys in class if, you know, distant learning is not working for you. Um, so it, we can have a small group of kids come in at any point. It doesn't, doesn't make a difference. So keep that in mind. Um, and, yeah, so um, I know that you guys are I, – I totally respect that you don't have your cameras on. That's fine. You don't have to have them on. Um, if you have questions, don't be afraid to unmute yourself on the Zoom by holding the space bar down and talking like it's a normal class. Just fire out questions. If you're still bashful about that, you can always type it in the chat. I have the chat going. Uh, so I can kind of see, that's why I keep looking this way to see if anyone's typing in the chat. Uh, if you have a question, you can just privately message me and I'll bring it up very subtly. Um, and so I want to give you guys an opportunity to make it feel like a normal classroom. Yeah, I know that you guys are usually pretty quiet in the mornings, uh, but I still want it to be interactive, right? That's how you can learn. You can, you can ask questions. Why did this work? I'm not quite understanding that. Can we go through a different problem? Uh, can you explain that differently? Uh, that type of thing. Um, so... But again, I want to I want to just take the time this morning just for a few seconds here to thank you for being here. You know, um, it's it's time out of your day. Um, I know it's it's school, right? We still have to have school as normal. I think that's still important, but um, I think it's important that you guys are here. Um, you know, this is kind of weird times. I've never had to do with this before, where you know we have class as normal on via live. But I kind of like it. Um, hopefully, you guys find yourself enjoying it a little bit. I know it's. It's not as fun as interacting with your classmates in the hallways and stuff, but I think the way that I handle this class, I think that it works for us. So if you have any suggestions on things I should change and modify, um, how I handle my proceedings, please let me know. Don't be afraid to try to critique my skills so that I can get better. Um, so that's that's something I want to make sure of. Um, you know, this is a fluid class. I want to make sure that it accommodates to you. I'm trying to do everything I can in my, you know, my arsenal to make this as um, as accessible to you as possible because I know it's it's hard learning from home and I just want to make sure that you're getting as much out of it as you can so it feels like you're in class every single day uh, so again my setup is I don't record the zoom I think that's weird so you guys can keep your cameras muted I don't record that um, I record my iPad screen 
um, that I'm drawing on. So you can see that I'll draw on it here in a second. And then I also have a camera pointed at me. It's just over the head of this main webcam. It's just over here. It's the normal uh, classroom camera. That way you can still see me. You can still see me interacting. But then also you can see the exact notes. Um, I've been taking screenshots of my iPad. Uh, and then I post it on my website. Um, I believe you probably received a lot of emails from me the last couple days. I'm really sorry. I'm trying to be as informative as possible so you're not left in the dark about what to do and how we're going to proceed. Um, I'm kind of changing a little bit so it's a little more helpful for those who are distant learning normally, but also to you that have never had to experience this before. So. Um, yeah, so hopefully this works. Uh, let's get jump right in. So again, the question of the day today on Google that you'll have to answer is what is the solution for the second problem? What is the coordinate? So I want the coordinate like parentheses, number, comma, number, parentheses. That's what I want you to answer in Google Classroom. Um, when you do the work for the homework that's due on Friday, make sure you just do the work on a piece of paper, you know, write it down, take a picture of it, and then post that to Google Classroom. Don't email me your homework anymore. Just post to Google Classroom. I know last week's stuff, understandable, because we don't have a, an option for it. You can email me that. But the stuff that's this week and on, you'll have to submit via Google Classroom from now on. It's just easier for everybody in case we have to go distant learning long, long term. Okay. All right. So let's jump right in. Let's talk about um, our goal here is to um, find the points of intersections of um, and get to things to slope intercept form. So I'm just going to make up a first problem here. So let's just start with a kind of an easy one. So 5x plus 2. Okay. So let's say that that's my problem. And I want to... I. And I want to um, find the intersection point of this line. That's an individual line and another one. Uh, the other equation, um, let's see. Let's make a, another line. I'll put it in a different color. Uh, I'll try to keep these color coded. Um, let's say that we do um, 3x plus y equals 10. Okay, let's do that. Um, so these are these are my these are my two equations, and I'm hoping that this works out so that it makes sense to you. So this will be my first example. All right. So the f the thing that you need to know is that the first the first problem here uh, this is already in y equals m x plus b form. This is the form I want to get it into. You can see it on that first example, right? That it the b number is the two. That's where we start on the y axis every time. So I'm gonna start at positive two. If that was negative, I'd start at negative two. I'd start below. And then the slope is this number that's in front of x. We want to make that a fraction. If it's already a fraction, leave it. If it's positive or negative, don't really care. If it's a decimal, just put it over one. If it's a whole number like this, put it over one. And then go draw that. That's my slope. It's rise and run. So I'm gonna rise five and run one to the right. Um, and it's always from the first dot that you drew. So I'm gonna rise five from this dot, so one, two, three, four, five, and then run, run one to the right. And this is my drawing. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, let's do, a, let's do a, uh, the second one. Oh, I was supposed to put that in red. We'll go with black. <laughs> all right, so the second one we'll put in green here. Um, all right, so I need to rearrange the second equation, right? It's not in the right form. It's not y in the front, equal sign, and then the mx plus b. So I'm going to move this 3x like we did yesterday. So this 3x comes over and becomes negative like that. So I don't have to do any extra steps. I don't have to divide by any numbers. Um, so I have um, the positive 10. So I'm going to start at positive 10 on the y-axis. That's my b number. You can see that. It's always the number in the back, so I'm starting at positive 10, as you can see on my graph. And then my slope is negative 3 over 1. So I'm going to drop 3 and run 1, and I always go to the right. So from that first dot, so drop 3, run 1. And you can already see where I'm overlapping. Drop 3, run 1. Really, you only have to go two dots, but I try to go as many as I need. Um, and you can start to see where I'm crossing. And the, the whole point is, where is that point of intersection? So the coordinate right where they cross, that's this location right there. That spot is what we're looking for. That's the whole goal of today's lesson. Find that point of intersection. Uh, so the coordinate for that, again, you always tell me the right and left number first. So I'm to the right, one, positive one. And then I'm up, it looks like I'm up seven. That's what it looks like. It's about five from the top, yeah, so it's about seven. So that's the answer for the first one. That's what we're doing today. All right, so I'll stop there just for a second. Is there any questions with what what our what our goal is what we're trying to learn here this is the stuff we i did a very small example set yesterday to introduce this for the first time but is there any questions you can put it in the chat you can hold down your space bar and just talk like it's a walkie talkie um, you can turn on your camera if you need to 
Um, I just want to give you an option if you have any questions. Sorry, I can't, uh, my computer's over here, so that's why I'm looking at it. Okay, I'll take silences. This is too early for questioning. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, let's go to the second one. This is the goal. This is probably maybe what you're waiting for is to get to the second problem so you can answer the Google question of the day so you can be counted, uh, you know, present and whatnot. Uh, but let's, let's jump right in. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, okay. All right, let's go to the second problem here. Yeah, all right. Okay, so second problem, um, let's, let's just kind of make up a problem here. I'm gonna maybe make it a little more challenging than the last ones we did. Um, let's go with let's go with 4x plus 2y equals 6 and let's go with um, let's go with 5x plus let's go with 5x plus 3y equals 8. Yeah, let's do this. So we're going to try to find that point of intersection on these. So I'll give you a little bit of time, maybe you're writing this down. Maybe you want to try it. I'll give you just a few seconds here as I'm going to take a quick attendance here and submit this. Excellent. All right. Sorry, I'll go back to our notes here. Okay. Um, so let's start. Let's start right in here. Uh, let's talk about how we need to do this. So both of these equations, I need to rearrange. I need to get to the right form. Um, so I'll do the top one. Maybe I'll do the top one in like this bluish color. It almost looks black. All right. So um, I need to rearrange. I want. Remember, the goal is to get it to this form. Y equals mx plus b. This is how we need to graph it. So I'm going to definitely need to move the x over. So this 4x is going to have to move across. It's going to, be, it's going to become negative. So it'll look like this to start with. So negative 4x plus 6. That is a positive 6 over there. So I just I always move it after the equal sign. You could put it behind the 6. I just don't do that. And then the last step is I have to divide everything by 2 because I get the, I have to get the y by itself. I can't have a number in front of it if you look at that this form up here. right? So I need to get the y by itself. So. Um, so if I divide everything by 2, that will get rid of the number in front of y. And so my problem actually turns out to be, um, what is that, y equals negative 2x plus 3. That's dividing everything by 2. And that's what it worked out to be. Now, if those numbers didn't work out nice and pretty, just leave them fractions. Just put the 2 on the bottoms of everything. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be drawing. So um, so this first one, I'll rewrite it here. This is This is what we're looking at. This is what we've we've come up with when we when we rearranged. Um, so my, I'm going to start at positive three on the y-axis, and then my slope is the negative two. So that's uh, I got to make that a fraction. So it's negative two over one. So I'm dropping two because it's negative, and then running one to the right, and then drop two, run one, drop two, run one. And you can just keep doing this. You don't need to. Um, I like to go a couple dots just so you can see kind of where it's heading. So there's the first equation. Now I'll draw the second one. I'll, maybe I'll put this in this pink color again. Okay, so the second equation here, and this one everyone's kind of waiting for. Um, I need to rearrange, just like before. So I'm, I'm going to move that 5x across, so it becomes a negative 5x. And then I'm going to divide everything by 3. So um, that way it gets rid of the 3, so I'm going to divide everything by 3. Now this one doesn't work out nice and pretty like the last one did. Uh, I get some weird fractions. That's fine. So negative 5 thirds x, right? And then the 8 thirds, um, 8 divided by 3 on a, on a calculator is, um, what is that, 2.6 repeating? Let's see, what is, is that 2.6? 8 divided by 3? Yeah, 2.6 repeating. That's fine. You can go draw 2.6. So let's, let's do that. So we're going to find 2.6 here. So it's about right there. That's about 2.6. I'm going to draw 5 and run the 3. So um, that's my slope. So this is where I started. I started at about 2.6, almost the number 3. I'm going to drop 5 from here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then run 3 to the right. 1, 2, 3. And you can kind of see where I'm at. And then when I draw this line, and I can keep doing this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. You can kind of see where it's going. And I think 
I can kind of see where it crossed. It looks like it crossed right there. Uh, the coordinate is 1 comma 1. And just to prove the point, and this is what I want to get to, this is what I want to discuss. Some people are really good at guessing these. Uh, I want to show you that it is 1 comma 1. Um, and you know, that's this, this is a tough one, right? You're like, God, it doesn't look great. It's not looking like it's in the right spot. You're just, the goal is to like kind of estimate where you think it is. This isn't a, an exact science, right? You're trying to get as close as you can. And so you might have to take an educated guess. Like it looks like it's hitting two comma one. As long as you're in the ballpark, I'll give you the answer. Like I'm gonna go, okay, yeah, you're in the ballpark. You, you know roughly where it's at. Because graphing isn't the best way of doing this procedure that we're doing. Um, this is just one method of finding where points of intersection are. What we're gonna learn starting, eh, maybe not tomorrow, maybe Friday, maybe Friday, we'll start to learn the next procedure, the next way of doing this, um, which is a better method. It, it won't give you weird graphs like this where you have to like interpret a little bit. Uh, but let us let me uh, go through this just to kind of show you why that was the answer, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go to the next slide here, but your answer, again, the answer for your, your Google question of the day, it's hitting one comma one, and you wanna put that in parentheses and comma between it. So if you wanna go answer that Google question, you can. Uh, but let me write down this problem here. So this was five X plus three Y equals eight. And then what was the other one? It was four X plus two Y, four, 4x plus 2y equals 6. Okay, now I want to talk about why that why that was the solution. Why why I knew that 1, 1 was the correct answer. Because when you plug in your numbers, you know, I, I said it was 1, 1. If I were to plug these numbers into x and y, would it give me the right solution? That's what we're checking. So that's how people can guess at these. Well, if I plug in a 1 for x and a 1 in for y, I get five times one, which is five, and three times one, which is three, and add them together, and yeah, I get eight. So one, one worked for that one. And I'll check it on the top one. If I plug a one, one up here, that's four times one, which is four, two times one, which is two, add them together, and I get six. Yeah, so one, one actually gave me the right answers on both sides of the equation. If you were to plug in any other coordinates, it wouldn't do that. It wouldn't give you the right number. Um, it wouldn't work in both equations. Um, so that's that's the goofy part is like there's only one location where it would share where you could plug in the same numbers in both equations and they would work perfectly on both equations. It won't you know it won't give you a false a false number. Um, so it's it's kind of interesting. That's the goal of what we're trying to find. So some people are really good at just looking at the problem and they can guess. They're like, oh yeah, this is the answer. Um, but some people like you need to draw it. And again, that drawing like I was just showing you a little bit ago, it's it's tough, right? You're trying to. You're trying to figure out, you know, how to do that. So, all right. Um, so that's that's kind of the idea what we're getting into, right? I'm taking some screenshots here, so I don't lose any of those notes. We just, ooh, sorry, apologies. All right, all right. Any questions with the idea what we're doing here? Maybe I'll do one more. This will be my last problem of the day, I promise you, and then I'll have about 10 minutes left of class here where you can just kind of, you can go work on the assignment that I've assigned you. Um, you can take off, you can check out here. Uh, but let's do one more. This will be my last question. Okay, so um, let's start with, start with uh, an equation. Let's go with like y equals three halves x plus two. And let's go with um, 2x plus y equals 7. Let's do that. Uh, no, let's make that a 9. i got to make that a 9, I think. Let's make that a 9. Yeah, I don't, I, don't want, I don't want it to have any decimals. I want this to work out nice and pretty. Okay. Okay, so this is our last question of the day. Um, I want to graph these. The first one's already in the right form. I want to make sure that you understand that. So it's y equals mx plus b form. I don't need to rearrange it. My 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 y intercept is hitting two, and then the slope is telling me to rise three, run two, rise three, run two, rise three, run two, and you can kind of see where the line is. You really only have to draw two dots and then draw the line. I just like to draw a few. Now the second equation. I'll put this in a different color. Maybe we'll go with a green color here. Uh, I need to rearrange just a little bit. It's not as bad as the last one. So I'm going to rearrange here. So I have negative 2x plus 9. So I had to move that 2x across. 
the equal sign, so it became negative. So I'm starting at positive 9. That's up here. I get my graphs go out to 12. That's my normal graph, so that's how I knew where to draw that dot so fast. And then um, my slope is to drop 2, run 1. So it's negative, so I'm dropping and running. Drop 2, run 1. Drop 2, run 1. I can already see where it's crossing. Drop 2, run 1. I'll just stop there. And you can see right where it overlapped, it's nice and clean. These are very nice numbers. And so the coordinate where I'm crossing, I was crossing at 2, comma, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 2, comma, 5. And this is what I want to see today. Like, I want to see the work. I want to see the graphing. So if you need to draw this on just normal paper, that's fine. And then I want to see the coordinate for each. That's the goal. I want to see that coordinate where you're kind of thinking this is where they're crossing. Again, it's not an exact science. Sometimes you have to kind of make an educated guess. You saw it like the last one. Um, but just try to make sense of it, okay? Uh, you can always double check. You can plug those numbers in, see if it works in both equations. It does. Um, just to prove the point that it actually works, if I were to, if I were to take the... Uh, the 2, 5, and plug it in up here, 2 and 5. Well, 2 times this fraction, so if I plug the 2 in here, 2 times this, uh, the 2's would cancel out, and I'd be left with 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. So yeah, it would work. Um, so if I were to plug it in the bottom one, plug in the 2 and 5 down here, uh, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 5, that is 9. So it does actually work. So that's, wh that's what I want you to see. All right, now... We have about 10 minutes left of class here. Is there any questions that you possibly have? Maybe there, maybe I'm just confused you more. I don't know. Um, is there something that you need that maybe this will, I can better explain it to you, a different way of explaining it? I don't know. Um, it's kind of hard when I can't read your facial expressions or uh, you're not, you know, you're not brave enough to ask a question here. Okay. All right. Well, I'll do it this way. Um, if you have questions, stick around. If you feel comfortable with the notes we've taken, you can go ahead and do the assignment. I've already submitted it to you via Google Classroom, so you can go check out your classroom here. Um, so go ahead and uh, you can take off. You can log off if you want. Uh, I've already counted you present here today. Thanks. Uh, if, if you want to watch that video later tonight, this video, I'll post it later tonight. I'll, I'll make sure that I edit it and post it as soon as I can. But thanks for being here today, and take care of yourself. You know, Stay healthy. Stay safe. Okay, bye guys. A couple sticking around here.